Morning San Antonio starts right now. The White House is lauding Turkey for withdrawing its objection to Sweden joining NATO. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on today's high stakes NATO summit and the leaders now set for face to face meetings with President Biden. The heat is back in full force, only down to about 79 degrees. It is boring, it is mundane, but what one thing it definitely is also is still dangerous in the late afternoon here in South Texas. Please take precautions, especially with those pets. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is July 11th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. We hope you had a good Monday, even though, you know, it was a little warm in the afternoon. Very warm. Mm -hmm. I was outside working on a brisket yesterday, and it felt every bit of 100-something degrees. And let's see how close we got. Oh, wow, you're brave. <laughs> yeah, not only being outside, but also dealing with the, the heat, heat from there. the brisket. Yeah. That's that's a lot, man. Yeah, you're right about being careful because these temperatures drift into that range about 4 or 5 o'clock. Where you got to take some time, you got to drink water, you got to go inside, all those fun things. I know we remind you of this all the time, but it really is important because uh, heat uh, can be very, very dangerous, especially when you get into these kind of numbers. 103 is what we're forecasting here in San Antonio. That's where we were yesterday, but it's the heat index. It's around 109, probably 5, 6 o'clock this afternoon into this evening. Most of Texas is going to be baking today. Laredo, 108, heat index of 113. Corpus Christi doesn't make it to the triple digits, but their heat index sure does. It'll feel like 110 down there. Right now, we're cooling down a little bit. We're lucky to get below 80 here. Uh, I think that we may get below 80 for a brief period this morning, but not for very long. Heat index is already at 85. And as we look at the, uh, again, the forecast for San Antonio today, 103 the temperature, 109 for the feels like, again, later this afternoon. What's ahead? Does anything change? Are there any rain chances? There is a very, very small rain chance a little bit later this afternoon in the whole country. We'll talk about that in the extended forecast going up here in just a bit. Mark. All right, thank you very much, Justin. New this morning, a man waking up behind bars after holding a teller at gunpoint during a bank robbery Monday. Police tell us 27-year-old Matthew Flint has been charged with aggravated robbery. It happened around 10.45 a.m. on Wurzbach Road. Flint allegedly went into the bank, pulled a gun, and held the teller at gunpoint while demanding money. We're told he also wore brass knuckles during that robbery. After giving Flint the money, police say he ran off. Officers were able to find him at his apartment nearby. The gun and most of the money were recovered at that apartment. An 18-year-old is recovering from surgery this morning after being shot twice in the leg. It happened on Breeds Hill Drive. That's near Marbuck Road. And San Antonio police say three teenagers were involved here. They say one of, one of them shot the victim twice in the left leg, then took off running. Investigators say they may have found the gun that was used in the shooting. because the brutality she inflicted is unimaginable to anything you can think of. It's a case that one can never understand, a mother brutally killing her own child. And now, almost 10 years later, that mother now out of state custody. We were victimized once by the murder of the baby. We were victimized the second time going through the proceedings. And then you release her and you victimize us again. This is Texas Crime Stories, the murder of Caden Parker. New today, you can catch the latest Texas Crime Stories podcast episode, the murder of Caden Parker. It's dropping this morning. Check it out on KSAT.com or YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Topping of morning headlines, new details about the high stakes NATO summit in Lithuania. Turkey is withdrawing its long-held objections to Sweden joining the alliance. This comes as President Biden and other NATO leaders talk about Ukraine's ongoing war and potential NATO membership. ABC's Justin Finch is tracking the latest this morning. Vilnius, the Lithuanian capital, hosting an already history-making NATO summit. Turkey's President Erdogan and Swedish Prime Minister Christensen shaking hands following Erdogan's decision to drop Turkey's opposition to Sweden joining NATO. Vladimir Putin has been counting on the West to crack, NATO to crack, uh, the Transatlantic Alliance to crack. 
he has been disappointed at every turn, Vilnius will very much disappoint him. The announcement also comes after President Biden voiced his desire to see Sweden join NATO as soon as possible in a pre-summit phone call with Erdogan. After his about face, Erdogan's now lobbying for support for Turkey to join the European Union. At the summit, Ukraine's near two-year-long war with Russia is top of mind. Though the Western allies remain committed to backing Kyiv, President Biden says granting Ukraine membership now is a risk. If the war is going on, then we're all in the war. You know, we're at war with Russia. In a sign of unity, Biden and Ukraine's President Zelensky now set for talks tomorrow. Ukraine deserves to be in the alliance, he said. Not now, there is a war, but we need a clear signal. And we need this signal right now. The president has kept a busy schedule in Europe, meeting with Britain's King Charles and UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. After the NATO summit wraps tomorrow, President Biden is set to deliver a speech before making more stops in Europe, including to newly admitted NATO ally Finland. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And Texas will have a new interim attorney general by the end of the week. Governor Greg Abbott chose his deputy chief of staff, Angela Colmenero, to take over the job this Friday. Colmenero will step in for John Scott, who was named provisional state attorney general in May. In his resignation letter yesterday, Scott said in part, quote, the honor of serving as a provisional attorney general of Texas was always with an understanding that my duration would be limited in time. Governor Abbott honored my request. Scott will return to work in the private sector. Meanwhile, the Texas Senate will decide the future of the Texas Attorney General's office later this year. Ken Paxton was suspended as Attorney General after he was impeached in May. His Senate trial is scheduled for September 5th. Texas lawmakers have reached an agreement on property taxes, but lawmakers still need to vote on the $18 billion proposal. It includes $12 billion to reduce school property taxes, and it would increase the state's homestead exemption to $100,000. The deal would also create a three-year pilot program to reduce appraisals on non-homestead properties worth $5 million or less. Non-homestead properties include commercial, real estate, and second homes. Now, House Speaker Dave Phelan and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick also calling for small businesses to receive savings on the state's franchise tax. Lawmakers are expected to take up the legislation this week. Time now is 437 and 79 degrees for now. Amazon Prime Day is here. Still to come, we're talking about some of the biggest deals and some scams to look out for. Plus, what the San Antonio Police Department is doing to help you get your broken headlights fixed on your car instead of giving you a citation. I saw some leftover flares on 281 this morning from an overnight incident, but so far so good out there. And at last check with uh, Stephen Cavazos earlier, we heard that things were looking pretty good around the Alamo City as we take a live look at 35 and Loop 410. And pretty much the same morning, 79 degrees, starting a little warm today, and it's going to get warmer this afternoon. Things to be aware of and be careful and try to do maybe all your outdoor activities if you can earlier in the morning. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 441. San Antonio police are announcing a new partnership with a company that will help people get their broken headlights or taillights fixed without getting a citation. Now, Lights On is a Minnesota-based company that aims to get people help with their cars rather than having them pay money. Through the Lights On partnership, officers will now give out vouchers to those who have broken headlights and taillights. These vouchers will replace warnings for cit or citations from SAPD. It is intended to, uh, to improve community relations, um, to not fear the police, and help someone out financially when they've got to spend a little bit of money to get their, their car repaired. Since Lights On began in 2017, the company has had nearly 10 thousand vouchers redeemed. Fantastic program. 441, 79 degrees. And just ahead, George Stephanopoulos sits down with the parents of detained Wall Street Journal reporter as part of an ABC News exclusive interview. That's next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News broadcast exclusive. Is there any message you have for the Russian authorities? 
Journalism is not a crime. We want our son back. Yes. It's been over a hundred days since Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich was detained by the Russian government, accused of espionage and held in a Moscow prison. We need to have all the strength to survive this time until he gets back. This morning, his parents are speaking out to George Stephanopoulos. How did you learn the news that he'd been arrested? Well, we got a call from the Wall Street Journal that he didn't report back on time. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear more from Evan Gershkovich's parents and their important message for the world about their son. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Well, even in summer, it's all part of the college experience, figuring out how to pay for everything. There's rent, there's food, student loans, and that doesn't leave much left over. Following your size, Marilyn Moritz tells us where to find plenty of discounts for students. It was Money 101 for Claire Verrilli, a lesson in how expensive college life can be. You forget about the little things, just going out to dinner, getting new clothes. So first semester, I blew it. Now she tries to make every penny count. Students can get at least 10 to 15% off everything from retail to entertainment to food, unlocking hundreds of dollars in discounts. Some food stores and restaurants near her campus offer 10% off, but Uber Eats and DoorDash have deals too. When it comes to tech, Apple and Samsung offer discounts on certain smart products. Adobe Creative Cloud Plan gives 60% off for first-year students. Check out student savings at AT&T and Verizon too. There are also entertainment deals. Hulu, Apple Music, YouTube, Spotify, and Pandora all offer price breaks for students as much as 75%. And for $7.49 a month, Amazon Prime student has video, music, free delivery, and deals on travel. Keep in mind, students normally have to verify their status with an academic or .edu email or with proof of enrollment. I need to get new outfits for game days or just social events. And retailers like Levi's, Madewell, J. Crew, Nike, and Target offer student discounts on clothes. For clothing, it's nice when there is a discount. My advice, most anywhere you shop, go ahead and ask if there's a student discount. Now, one more thing as you begin your back-to-school shopping, mark your calendars for August 11th. That begins the weekend for tax-free shopping in Texas for most clothing, shoes, and school supplies. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And that will be just in time for the start of school. A lot of kids start the week after that. Looking out there with Transkai, things are moving at I-35 at Loop 410. So far, so good. Any problems, Mark, that not, you saw? Not that I can think of. I know Marilyn and her family are probably going, because her yes. twins <laughs> just finished college. So yeah. all done with that. She's already been through all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she has, yes. And Does here we go. Yeah. yeah, it is Prime Day, so you can find some stuff on Amazon, right? That's yeah. right. This is the day that mm -hmm. we work and shop at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, oh just kidding. it's already started. It has. Yes, it has. Yes. Yeah, I heard you talking about a crock pot earlier, and I'm yes. thinking we pretty much live in a crock pot at this point. Oh, yes. Like, yes. yes. I had yeah. it in mind for somebody we work with, but the idea was shut down. So, well, <laughs> uh, you know. It's not a bad It's a thought that gift. counts. It is. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. We do yeah. live in a steamer or a crock pot. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. 103 yesterday, guys. And that's about where we'll be today. You look at the numbers around South Texas and just about everybody uh, was in the triple digits yesterday. And if you weren't in the triple digits, well, you had a heat index in the triple digits. So it uh, just uh, doesn't matter here at this point. Heat is heat. Uh, and it will be hot again today. We're keeping tally of those 100 degree days. We're going to set a stretch here where uh, we're going to see quite a few. So far this year, if you include today, which I'm fairly certain will be above 100 this afternoon, that'll make for 17 days. Now we're well below those big numbers we set back in 2009, 2022, just last year in 2011. But we're pretty much on pace here. Back in 2009, we had 21 days at this point of 100 degree days. And uh, last year we had 33 at this point. Will we get there? Well, we can't say. But uh, we know that over the next week or so, we're going to continue to add to that number. Right now, we've got 80 degrees outside. Man, I wish it would cool down a little more than that. We've got some morning clouds starting to spread, and you can see those in the background. And the dew point is 74 with a heat index of 85. Around the area, upper 70s, close to 80. And then there's Del Rio. Man, I don't know what's going on out there, but it does not cool down. It is still 87, 87 at this hour. 
uh, and you're probably going to struggle to get below 85 this morning. 77 in Bolverde, 79 in Braunfels, 81 in Castroville, 77 in Lost Maples. And today is a CPS Energy Yellow Day, so we've got to conserve that energy between 3 and 8 o'clock. We know how this goes. Uh, you know, just do the little things to try to conserve some of that electricity. Uh, when you look at ERCOT, though, it does look like we'll be okay today as far as the statewide power grid. We have enough power uh, to sustain all this heat. We're also noticing we've got some storms up across parts of Oklahoma, a big complex of showers and storms, likely some flooding now around Oklahoma City. Be nice if some of that rain was closer to us. It is not. This is working south and east. We'll move into parts of far northeast Texas, but won't make it here. Now, with that being said, we've got a few leftover showers here across west Texas. There is a little bit of energy here. It's possible that some of this cloud cover and maybe, maybe a shower to uh, mix, uh, mix her way into parts of the hill country a little bit later this afternoon. Let's fast forward to noontime. This does show a couple showers, maybe some added clouds, Fredericksburg, Kerrville. And then by 5 o'clock, I can't roll out a stray shower, a stray storm. I'd say Bernie, Kerrville, Fredericksburg points north. Here in San Antonio, I'll put in a 10% chance of rain, but I'm certainly not confident that we'll see uh, anything on the radar around here locally, or at least around San Antonio Metro. 83 at 9 a.m. By the time we get into the afternoon, 92 feels like 103. Uh, close to 110 for that feels like number by 3, 4, 5 o'clock. And our high temperature is uh, forecast to be, again, around 103. Uh, there's like some of the forecast heat indices. Some places, yes, we'll be pushing 110, if not a little bit above that. This is that, uh, that danger zone where you spend a lot of time outside. It is not going to be good. So just uh, you be aware of the, the time you spend outdoors. 102 tomorrow, 102 Thursday. Take your pick. 102, 103. I'm going to give you the choice. You get to be the forecaster here. Uh, you can pick either one. Yeah, well, whichever one suits oh. you best. Well, wait a minute. Wasn't yesterday, Monday, wasn't it 101? Yeah, I had to Justin. bump it up. I had to bump it up, and I didn't want to. Man, I sat there for like five minutes thinking, man, I don't want to do this, but uh, I didn't have a choice. Five minutes pondering a degree or two? Mm -hmm. a, okay. a degree. As we say in the uh, weather department, what's a degree amongst friends, you know? So. Mm. Well, I was looking forward to 101, maybe, hot. maybe the Tuesday. Hot is hot is hot, but yes. It will cool down at some point, just not in the next seven days. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 452, 79 degrees. New details following health concerns for a couple stars. When we come back, what's next for Madonna and Ozzy after some big scares? Take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, one, seven, Fireball one. Daily four, number six, three, two, one, Fireball zero. Cash five, one, 10, 19, 23, 27. Texas two step, one, 13, 16, 34. Bonus ball, 27. And your Powerball numbers, two, 24, 34, 53, 58. Powerball 13, power play two. Good luck. Good morning from Wimbledon. We're here, home of the grass courts, to share everything tennis and also the Americans who are vying for the championship. And we're also going to go behind the scenes to the good folks who uh, keep these grounds running. Well, you'll learn all about that and the most delicious strawberries and cream, <laughs> the secrets behind that, coming up on Good Morning America, live from London. Madonna says she's on the road to recovery, and she's felt all the positive energy and prayers from fans. This in a statement on Instagram, her first since she was hospitalized last month with what we're told was a serious bacterial infection. She also says her entire North American tour, which was supposed to start Saturday, will now be postponed. But her European tour will start in October. Ozzy Osbourne is canceling an upcoming festival show, saying he's just not ready yet to hit the stage. In a statement, he says he's dropping out of his slot at the upcoming Power Trip Festival in October. Osborne hasn't done a full live concert in five years because of various medical problems. The 74-year-old hopes to be back on stage next year. Vampire, flying to the top of the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. Olivia Rodrigo's first single off her upcoming album debuts at number one, the third number one of her career. It knocks Morgan Wallen's Last Night out of the top spot where it had reigned for 13 weeks. And happy birthday to Alessia Cara, the Grammy-winning singer turning 27. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. 
Three minutes till five, 79 degrees. And let's look outside with Trans Guide. We were looking earlier at I-35 at Loop 410 where things are moving. And Stephen Gavazos is in the studio. Good morning, Stephen. We'll be checking in with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And then uh, they made it across. And then I guess she freaked out and panicked and tried to make it across with the dog. And it, he said it just happened all too suddenly. Right now, severe weather slamming a big part of the country. What we're learning about the flood emergency in the Northeast. And here at home, we're dealing with the heat. Uh, it's going to get pretty hot this afternoon, but for now, we are at 79 degrees. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, July 11th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Tuesday. Hey, Happy Tuesday. welcome back. Thank you. Nice long weekend off. Very good. Uh, warm, but but nice. <laughs> yeah, and progressively warmer throughout the weekend and into yesterday as well. That's right. Well, let's go ahead and check with Justin to see if there is, well, I don't know, a hint of relief in the far, <laughs> far future. Uh, uh, you know, it's a sad state of affairs when you're excited that we get below 80 degrees in the morning. That's that's just where we are right now. The numbers, the triple digit numbers continue to add up. Uh, here's a look at what we're thinking temperature wise. Uh, right now we've got temperatures right at 80, but I do think we'll fall just below that number uh, here in the next couple of hours. At least that's the hope anyway. Uh, 78 up there in Bandera, 77 Las Maples, 78 up in Kerrville. So we're cooling down a little bit in the Hill Country. But if uh, if you liked yesterday, which I don't know many, if many people did, uh, today's going to be basically the same thing. 103, uh, the forecast this afternoon, heat index will be up around 110. Uh, by the time we get into the late afternoon hours, there is a very, very small chance of a shower to up across the hill country. You probably don't see anything here in San Antonio other than a few added clouds. Let's go outside for you and I'll show you uh, what we got on our live cam right now. Just a few clouds. And uh, what about the heat index? We mentioned that 110 today. We're going to talk a little bit uh, uh, here in a bit about heat exhaustion versus heat stroke signs that uh, you may be getting overheated in Death Valley. 125, maybe 130 here next couple of days. So that's my, it could be worse forecast. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit too. But let's get over to Steven now. It's Tuesday, traffic better than yesterday, Steven? I don't know, Justin, that tease was a little bit, uh too much of a downer for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Kidding. But you know what? We're here to make people feel good about traffic at least. Uh, let's get a wider look at 10 at the Y. Uh, things are looking great this morning. Uh, pretty much starting the same way it was yesterday with really not a lot of activity out on the roadway. Uh, but you can see we still have a few folks that are making that early morning drive. Just be on the lookout because what we are spotting is, of course, you see it right behind me, that active construction. Let's go ahead and take you in here to I-35 southbound. We're hinting a little bit of a slowdown there with traffic moving at just over 20 miles per hour. Hour, but that is because we have road work that should be wrapping up. I mentioned it yesterday, so just prepare for that. But it doesn't really seem like it's impacting the drive time for anyone that's heading in from New Braunfels this early. Check it out. 35 southbound. We have about a 30 minute commute to the downtown area. 281 southbound. We'll work our way upward uh, heading in from Bulverde. It should be about a 27 minute commute. And if you are heading in from Bernie this early, 25 minutes to the Alamo City. But back here at I-10 at the Y, again, our morning is starting off pretty quiet. We'll keep a close eye on things and I'll find out what other road closures are taking place. I'll have that update coming up a little bit later on. Mark Suff. Thank you, Stephen. Top story this morning, a 16 year old has been charged with intoxication manslaughter following a deadly head on crash. New Braunfels police were called to the scene at State Highway 46 and T Bar M Drive on Sunday afternoon. One person was killed and five others were hurt. As Patty Santos reports, two children in that wreck are not out of the woods just yet. Especially with children, um, it gets difficult. A head-on crash along State Highway 46 Sunday afternoon sent several people to the hospital, including a 9 and 12 year old. We're here to help. We want to be here to help. So at this point in time, the best thing I can do is the best invest investigation that we can do. New Braunfels Police Traffic Sergeant Timothy Brinkater says his team is working diligently to find out what happened. Police say the family was waiting in a center lane to turn into T bar M when all of a sudden the driver, the 16 year old driver coming the opposite way, drifted straight into their vehicle. There were signs of intoxication. We are a no refusal city slash county, so if alcohol is is 
suspected in the crash, you do not have the right to refuse. We are going to get a blood draw search warrant. That was done in this case. The 16 year old behind the wheel of the Ford Explorer had minor injuries, but the man in the front passenger seat, 51 year old Jose Medrano Perez, was killed. A 41 year old man in the back seat was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. Today, police have been getting updates on the condition of the family of four in the Honda Pilot. The driver is out of the hospital. His wife is in um, guarded condition, from what I understand. The two children are in serious condition. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And police say that the 16 year old did not have a driver's license and they're working to figure out if alcohol was a factor in this crash. We are told that Fedez was roommates with the teenage driver and related to the other passenger in the vehicle. San Antonio fire investigators trying to figure out what sparked a house fire. It happened yesterday afternoon on Dugas Drive. That's not far from Marbach and Loop 1604. We're told the fire started outside, then spread to the home and then the roof. The people inside were able to get out safely. Damage is estimated at more than $100,000. Topping your morning headlines, flood emergency in the Northeast. Some towns have received an entire summer's worth of rain in a matter of hours. As ABC's Rihanna and Alley reports, some entire communities are cut off by floodwaters. This morning, rescue teams from across the country are racing to Vermont, where flash floods are wreaking havoc on mountain towns. Swift water rescue teams from uh, North Carolina, and uh, we have a uh, swift water rescue team coming from Michigan and from Connecticut. Nearly a foot of rain has fallen since Sunday. This image, taken overnight, shows a flooded downtown Montpelier, the state's capital. More than 50 people rescued in the state as of last night. Some towns are inaccessible. Our uh, infrastructure um, transportation lines went over the mountains. All those um, transportation lines um, for two thirds of the state are cut off right now. So our teams have to uh, transverse those mountain ranges um, coming up from the south and working up north. In neighboring New York, a woman was killed, swept away by floodwaters in the village of Highland Falls while trying to get to higher ground with her family and dog. And then uh, they made it across. And then I guess she freaked out and panicked and tried to make it across with the dog. And it, he said it just happened all too suddenly. Some areas north of New York City received a summer's worth of rain in six hours. The damage being compared to Tropical Storm Irene more than a decade ago. Meanwhile, triple digit temperatures are expected in parts of the south for several more days in what could become the longest heat wave on record. El Paso, Texas has seen 25 consecutive days of 100 plus degrees. In Florida, it's not just the air temperature that's soaring. An ocean heat wave is pushing water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico into the mid 90s. Forecasters also say a Saharan dust cloud moving across the Atlantic could soon reach Florida, potentially bringing less rain and poorer air quality. Rihanna Alley, ABC News, New York. Convicted sexual predator, former USA Gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser was stabbed 10 times at a federal prison in Florida. Joe Rojas, president of the local correction officers union, says Nasser is in stable condition after corrections officers saved his life. Nasser was sentenced to in, in 2018 to up to 175 years in prison after more than 150 women and girls said that he sexually abused them over the past two decades. Right now, 508, 79 degrees. And still to come, Instagram's threads is making big waves, passing 100 million users. That's faster than chat GPT. Details ahead in your morning consumer news. Plus a special homecoming for these twins. You don't want to miss their story. And here at home, we are at 79 degrees for now. A little humid out there, a little warm, but today we are looking to reach the triple digits once again. We're gonna need to get creative to stay cool in those afternoon hours. We'll be right back. And welcome back, it is 5-11, so check this out. A pair of formerly conjoined twin babies are now heading home after a successful operation. The Texas Children's Hospital announced that sisters Ella Grace and Eliza Faith Fuller are on their way home after a separation operation last month. They spent four months recovering in the neonatal ICU and the surgery lasted for at least six hours. A team of 17 professionals worked together to separate the girls who were conjoined at the abdomen and shared liver tissues. Glad they're on the way home. Me too. 
Time now, 512 and 79 degrees for now. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Prime Day is finally here, and cybersecurity experts are warning about new shopping scams. Details next in your Morning Tech Bites. Tag, you're it. Imagine a world with no drama. With 4imprint, you don't have to chase down the perfect promotional products. Exclusive apparel, bags, drinkware, and more. 4imprint will help you capture the moment and guarantee to deliver your order on time and on budget. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. One Prilosec OTC each morning blocks heartburn all day and all night. Prilosec OTC reduces excess acid for 24 hours, blocking heartburn before it starts. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. $120 for the night, please. $95 for the night, please. Wait, what? If you use Trivago, Trivago will compare hotel prices from hundreds of websites worldwide so you can often find a better deal for your hotel room. Maybe you should try Trivago next time. Hotel Trivago. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon just kicked off its annual Prime Day, and bargain hunters looking for a steal could get taken for a ride. Cybersecurity experts are warning shoppers to be aware of scams to steal their info, including phishing emails, fake websites, social media posts, and text messages. Hulu has launched a new go-to destination for all things animated. They call it Anna Mayhem, and it allows access to more than 20,000 episodes of animated content, both legacy and original. Finally, the so-called Twitter killer is continuing to grow. Instagram's threads is up to 100 million users in just less than a week. That dwarfs the milestone set by ChatGPT, which took two months. According to Instagram CEO, there have already been more than 95 million posts. Just remember, when you thread, you're never alone. It's a tight-knit community. Those are your Tech bites. Uh -huh. <laughs> there is a part of Andrew Dippert's brain that works non-stop right. to make those things happen. Yes. Wouldn't it be disappointing if we found out that somebody else wrote that part? Oh, I would be one? really oh. let down. I, I have to think, think about it's, that. It's, but I think it's, it's him. Gotta be Andrew. <laughs> yeah, at least it, most of it. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he uh, spends plenty of hours in the in the writing room yes. coming up with these. But mm -hmm. uh, traffic's no joke this morning. Things have been great. Good. I wasn't thinking about that. I just kind of come up with these puns. Sometimes they land, sometimes they don't, much like Andrew Dimbert's jokes. But uh. Uh, let's get a quick look at I-10 at the Y. It has been a quiet morning over in my department, and I love that because anyone that has to hit the roads in the next few minutes won't really encounter much as we have the camera on rotation here. There's Tenet Callahan West. Be on the lookout, though. Of course, we still have some of the active construction that is wrapping up. Uh, talk about this. 35 southbound near Loop 1604. We have a little bit of a slowdown, and that is because we actually have some road work taking place there, likely part of the NEX expansion project. So just keep that in mind if you are traveling into San Antonio from, let's say, Schertz, Live Oak. Uh, this early in the morning, you may see that slowdown. But the wide look at the map really just is going to show a lot of that active construction. And as a friendly reminder, I-10 is no exception to that role. We have a bridge work taking place later this morning. Should start around 9 and wrap around 3 in the afternoon. In the meantime, what we will see out there are alternating main lane closures in both directions at Fredericks Creek Bridge. This takes us to the end of the work week, folks. But grab your camera phones now and open that app because we have our QR code that is now on your screen. And I updated the list of closures yesterday. So it lets you know what's happening in and around the Alamo City. Always good to know before you go. Justin, we talked about this yesterday, those tech stock Cruise in this heat. Eesh. Brutal. Brutal. What you got in the weather pun department? You got anything? I, um, I'm fresh so, out. Oh, okay. I'll come back with that in a minute. I will. I don't Appreciate know what to say you. right now. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, we've got heat advisories, excessive heat warnings going on across the uh, southwest. Our big ridge of high pressure uh, still just uh, really bringing the heat in a big, big way. Uh, it is going to be sitting here for the foreseeable future, and that means our weather is going to be pretty constant, constantly hot. Uh, 103 in El Paso today, they keep adding up the triple digit days. 103 here in San Antonio, I'll point your attention to Death Valley. We know it's hot there, it's hot every summer. It's 115 to forecast here, but I wanna show you uh, what we're expecting as we go forward at Death Valley. Just to show you, it could be worse. This is what they're expecting this weekend. 127 on Saturday, 128 on Sunday. Now the all-time high is 134. That was back, set back in 1913. That's still the Earth's hottest temperature. Uh, so they're gonna be in the 120s. Uh, that's a little hotter than what we're dealing with here. 
Still hot here in South Texas, but not that. 80 degrees right now. Dew point is at 74. We've got southerly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Heat index is at 85. So we're already looking at heat indices even at this hour, and they get worse. By noontime, 92. By 1 o'clock, we've got a feels like number of 105. Uh, feels like it could go as high as 109 by 4 or 5 o'clock and the high temperature will be somewhere around 103. That's where we were yesterday. We've still got some of that humidity in place. Uh, so that's uh, that's where we'll be this afternoon. Uh, what about ERCOT? Do we have enough energy to support all this heat here across Texas? We do. At least that's what the forecast shows that uh, demand will not outpace supply. So it'll be good there. You know, there's always some worries with the uh, electrical grid, but uh, ERCOT letting us know that uh, things look good in that department. Uh, as you look at the uh, state of Texas as a whole, there are some uh, good rain showers and storms up across parts of Oklahoma. This will work its way across the Red River towards the FW this morning. Could cause some travel issues up there. And there are a few showers uh, across parts of West Texas. This is kind of on the edge of that ridge of high pressure. So there is a little bit of energy that could work its way down into the hill country a little bit later today. And there you see that cluster of storms around Oklahoma City now starting to make its way into North Texas. A few very, very spotty showers here around uh, San Angelo. And this computer model does want to develop maybe a shower or two as we head into the afternoon there across the hill country. Again, I don't anticipate much, but if you're watching us from Curvo and Fredericksburg, I just can't completely rule it out. It's about a 10% chance uh, in the forecast. And maybe, just maybe it throws a few clouds in our direction here in San Antonio. Uh, we'll see. We're going to call for a mostly sunny afternoon, but uh, one or two clouds coming in from the northwest, possible too. Uh, that, that's where we are in this forecast. We're, we're begging for just some clouds. Uh, 112 is the forecast heat index in Seguin this afternoon. Gonzales, Divine. These are the kind of numbers where heat exhaustion can happen very quickly. Uh, and you've got to be so very careful. I know it sounds like a broken record. We say it every day, but it's a good reminder. Uh, heat is, uh, especially that kind of heat, is so very dangerous. And as we look at the extended forecast, that kind of heat stays right with us all the way into next week. There are some indications that next week could be even hotter. I know. Dog days of summer are here. We are stuck in the middle of it. But like I said yesterday, we'll get through it together, and that cold front will be here before you know it. Just That's give it a true. few months. Just think cool thoughts. Yeah. Cool thoughts. Thank you, Justin. Yep. I appreciate your positivity. We're trying. Misguided as it is. 520, <laughs> 522 and 79 degrees. Two big movies are coming out on the same day, and many people are not choosing between them. That's next in your Spotlight News. Lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, one, one, seven, fireball one. Daily four, six, three, two, one, fireball zero. Cash five, one, 10, 19, 23, 27. And your Texas two step, one, 13, 16, 34. Bonus ball, 27. And those Powerball numbers, 2, 24, 34, 53, 58, Powerball 13, power play 2. Good morning from an iconic American landmark right on the California coast. It's the Santa Monica Pier. And coming up on GMA as our Diving Into Summer Series rolls on, we're showing you all this pier has to offer. It's got food, it's got games, it's got a roller coaster. And coming up live on GMA, I will be on top of the famous Ferris wheel. You're not gonna wanna miss that. Diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. It's a big day on July 21st when two high profile and very different films hit theaters. Barbie starring Margot Robbie and Oppenheimer starring Killian Murphy. The AMC theater chain says more than 20,000 members of its Stubbs Rewards program have bought tickets for a Barbenheimer double feature, planning to see both films, total running time nearly five hours, on the same day. Destined for greatness. But those in power will only see me as a sword. I suggest you take the throne as a king. Holding on. Shall we vote? More than 20 years after he played a different emperor in Ridley Scott's Gladiator, Joaquin Phoenix reunites with the director for Napoleon. The epic action film chronicling the rise and fall of Napoleon Bonaparte marches into theaters November 22nd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
saw that full, full trailer yesterday. It looks oh, yeah? amazing. Well, this little cliff looked pretty good, too. Yeah, you need to see the rest. Okay, I'll check it okay, out. All right, 527, <laughs> 79 degrees. Let's look at the roads with Trans Sky looking over there at Hackberry and Loop 410 at Babcock Road. Things look okay so far, but we're going to get a full check with Stephen Cavazos in just a minute. Hi there, it's about 5.30, looking out there with live cam. Yeah, 79 degrees, might as well be 80, kind of warm, but it's gonna get even warmer this afternoon. Just is laughing because he doesn't know what to say anymore. Mm -hmm. That's true, yeah. It is Tuesday <laughs> the 11th and it is a perfect time of year. They planned this well with these big releases coming to movie theaters. Oh uh, yeah, stay indoors. That's right, we were just yeah. talking about that weird phrase we just heard, Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer, Barbenheimer for, <laughs> next, for next, not this weekend, next but weekend. Next week, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, it'll be crowded I'll for like both movies. I spread it out, though. I mean, I'll have to spread out those movies and go in. I like to go Absolutely. one weekend with right. my friends, and then I'll go with my dad. And there you right. go. Yeah, you so. won't watch it all one day. No, no but that I sounds fun, either. though. I know our uh, executive producer, Joy, said Joy she's might. may take that route. So. Yeah. Right, Joy? She marathon. will see them back to back, yeah. for sure. And I looked, and it looks like a bunch of Mission Impossible tickets are still oh, yeah. available yeah. for this weekend. Yeah, That's that'll cool. be a good one. Wait, it comes out this weekend? Yeah, yeah, as a matter of so. fact, uh, I think some showings start today or tomorrow. Oh, oh that's fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Barbie and Oppenheimer are next week. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. And, and Elemental's out there just in case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to schedule your <laughs> movie dates yes. appropriately. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'll work on that. Uh, yeah, it, it is uh, a good stretch here to check out movies. Uh, we are in the summer doldrums. Uh, if you will, and as we look at the uh, temperatures today, 103 here in San Antonio. That's the forecast, 109 is what it will feel like. Uh, Corpus Christi will feel like 110, Houston 109. These heat index values are no fun. Uh, we've dealt with them much of the summer, but we've got heat advisories in effect again today for much of Texas. As we go outside for you right now, it does look like we're starting to get some of that morning overcast working in. Uh, you know, morning clouds uh, are always tricky, but I, I think they'll be here for uh, maybe a few hours and then they go away. 80 degrees right now. We still have yet to fall below that number and a heat index already at 85. As we look at the forecast again, 103 feels like numbers 109. This is in the extreme category. Uh, we do have to be careful today, not only today, but going forward because uh, not much changes uh, here over the next week or so. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the Saharan dust. Where is it? Is it moving in? Are we going to see it here in Texas? We've got details on that coming up here in just a couple of minutes, but we'll toss it over to Stephen now and check in on those morning roads as you head out to work. Justin, I thought about uh, that pun I was going to say. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, your forecast may be heating up, but your presentation is always 100. I, like I don't that. know. I we'll work on it. That. Let Thank me just you, work on that a little bit more. I mean, I was hoping for a little bit of a chuckle over there. But no, no, no. It was, it was very good. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. Steph is always. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice. <laughs> Hopefully that made some of you laugh at home. But uh, you know what? We're smiling ear to ear, uh, ear to ear here in the traffic lab because things have been looking great on the roadways. There's 410 at Jackson Keller. Uh, north and southbound lanes or east and west, pardon me, don't look too busy. But we're going to see that change probably in the next half hour or so. Uh, still spotting a little bit of a slowdown, but it looks like things may be wrapping up here at 35 southbound near Loop. 1604. You see traffic moving at 55 miles per hour, but outside of the loop, uh, right around the Forum is where we still have a bit of a slowdown, and that could just be crews wrapping up some of the project that they were working on overnight. Wide look at the map does show we still have plenty of construction to look forward to for the rest of the week. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on, but if your destination is the Alamo City this early in the morning, I-10 westbound heading in from Seguin, you should still be in the green. 31 minutes at this hour, 33 along 87 northbound. If you're traveling in from Lavernia, this early in the morning and for friends down in Floresville it should take you about half an hour to get here to San Antonio. But back here on Trans Guide 35 at Pine, things have been looking fine. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and I'll have more updates for you coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man was badly hurt after a crash on the city's north side. It happened just before 10 last night on McCarty near San Pedro in Loop 410. Police say the man ran his truck into a tree and had to be extracted by firefighters after the crash. Take a look at what's left of his truck. He was taken to University Hospital with life-threatening injuries. And right now there's no word on his condition. And some other big stories that we're following this morning. A six-year-old from Florida who protected herself after police say a man tried to kidnap her. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has more. You're playing over here? And then where did he come from? 
This brave little girl in Miami is describing the moment she was nearly kidnapped while playing outside. Six-year-old Lyric says a man approached her and grabbed her. When he came and grabbed you, did you scream? Yes. She described to our Miami station, WPLG, what happened next. And then what'd you do? Yeah, I him. And then what? Then he slapped me and threw me on the floor. Police say the man in this video grabbed Lyric and tried to take her, but she fought back, not only biting the man, who was many times her size, but also getting a good look at him. What did he look like? He got black hair with Jesus earrings and white Close. Police later arresting this man, Leonardo Venegas, with that black hair, cross earring, and white shirt, just as Lyric had described. Lyric credited her mom with teaching her a timeless lesson. And what does your mom say about strangers? Don't talk to strangers. I told her, don't talk to strangers, and if anything happens, just try to pick up something that's close to her and just hit her with it. Police commending Lyric for her intelligence and bravery. But we're thankful that she, you know, did enough to save her life. Rihanna Alley, ABC News, New York. Happening now, President Biden is in Lithuania for the annual NATO summit. He is expected to have a meeting with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during the international gathering of leaders. Zelensky is pushing Biden and other world leaders for an invite into NATO as soon as possible. Rudy Giuliani is negotiating a resolution to a lawsuit brought on by two former Georgia election workers. The pair sued the former New York mayor for defaming them after the 2020 election. They have already won nearly 90000 for attorney's fees. Now, in a court filing, their legal team said Giuliani's lawyer approached them to discuss a possible resolution. If you're feeling very lucky, you may want to get a Powerball ticket. Tomorrow night's drawing it will be worth $725 million. That's because no one won Powerball's grand prize last night. And by the way, Mega Millions for tonight is 480. So you add them up. If you go play both and win both, if you're the luckiest person in the known universe, <laughs> you'll win $1.2 plus million. I'm sorry, billion yeah. dollars. No, that's, billion. that's too much. You just one or the other. Oh, that's too much? Yeah, that's just too much. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm glad you're showing discretion there. I agree with you. That is just too much. <laughs> well, no, you got to share the wealth. You can't take it all. That's that's true. No, yes, no. I'll work on that. 537, <laughs> 79 degrees. And still to come, return of Furbies, why the late 90s toy sensation is making a comeback. And it's an exciting day for shoppers because we have all this money to spend, right, Steph? Oh, yeah. After the break, we're talking <laughs> about some of the biggest deals on day one of Prime Days. And it's a weird morning for me because if there's a sale and I don't I haven't found anything. I don't really want anything, well, I guess. don't give up. Never give up. <laughs> of course, I'll probably find something after the sale. I'm sure of it. But for now, 79 degrees out there with live cam. We'll be right back. The wait is over for bargain hunters across the globe. Amazon kicked off Prime Day. It's 48-hour sales extravaganza. Amazon products are among the biggest deals, like the Amazon Fire 43-inch TV and Kindle tablet reader. But keep in mind, the best deals will likely have limited availability. New York Times sorted through and tested hundreds of items. Because you can hook it up to Bluetooth to your phone, you can play music while you're getting ready, and it even has an alarm clock function. Interesting. So make sure you click on watch for lightning deals or get alerts through the Amazon shopping app to get notified the second deal that goes live. Now, and this year, there are many deals that are invite only. So if one of those catches your eye, make sure you click that request invite button. And experts say now is the time to buy strollers and grills. They can be pretty expensive, but hold off on mattresses and large appliances. Labor Day will likely be a better time to buy those items. I was just looking mm -hmm. and there are some pretty good deals out there. Let's see, Echo devices like mm -hmm. smart home bundles mm -hmm. about 65% off. Yeti products 30 to 50% off oh, and yeah. Apple Watch uh, depending on the model 20 to 30% off. Yeti items yeah, during yeah. the hot summer. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah exactly. <laughs> that works right? out. Yeah, the whole cold drinks too. Yeah. yeah that's so good. just a few of the things we're seeing right now on trending deals. 542, 79 degrees. And after the break, we'll look at some of the new stories on our website right now. They are trending on KSAT.com. 
Welcome back. It's 545. So trending right now on KSET.com. It took two special legislative sessions, but it appears state lawmakers have finally reached a deal to lower your property taxes. So it's a combination of the two proposals the House and Senate have been butting heads on for months. The big highlights, increasing homestead exemptions to $100,000 and reducing the rate you pay to your local school district. However, schools still need that funding, so how will they get the money? That's a huge problem with trying to uh, eliminate property taxes with a one-time surplus, which is where the money's coming from. It's got very, very broad implications, specifically for public education in the long run. So that's what we're diving into in a new case that explains what it means to compress property tax rates, how that will affect funding for schools, and the governor's idea to go even further and eliminate a huge chunk of property taxes. So you can watch Case It Explains now on our homepage. Heads up, no outdoor burning allowed in Kendall County. County commissioners reinstated the burn ban effective yesterday morning. According to the U.S. Drought Monitor map, Kendall County up near Bernie is experiencing extreme to exceptional drought. And if you need to tidy up your yard, but you don't have the tools, San Antonio Community Shed can help. The city of San Antonio provides a community tool shed full of equipment that can be used at no cost. Tools available include things like lawnmowers and leaf blowers. They can be checked out on Thursday and Friday mornings, and we have all those details on our website at kset.com. Well, it's a little early for Halloween, but something could be lurking in your home that's on the verge of reawakening. It's been lying dormant for decades. But that's all about to change. Here's ABC's Will Gans. For decades, they've been relegated to the darkest corners of our closets, plotting their return until now. Tickle me! Yep. Furby is back. For me, Furbies occupy the same space as, like, Bigfoot. So Bigfoot has all of these rumors, Furby has all of these rumors, you know, it still talks when you take the batteries out and all of that kind of stuff, but people also like kind of like Bigfoot. <laughs> Just in time for Furby's 25th anniversary, hey, Furby. the Bigfoot of the toy world returns. Furby fans welcoming back their furry faves. They're more interactive than like a traditional stuffed animal, but they're more physical than like a video game. Hasbro resurrecting the owl hamster hybrid that caused a Furby frenzy in the late 90s. Siobhan Wright works as a Furby customizer for those super fans. So this one is my travel Furby. It goes with me on all my trips. <laughs> it has a little suitcase. And now two new Furbies are hitting store shelves this week, one purple and one coral, featuring five voice activated modes and over 600 responses and one other major update. The 25th anniversary Furbies will have an off switch. They do have an off switch. They also uh, do not have internet connectivity or anything like that. Uh, they also have like a calming mode where you can ask it to play chilled out music. But these new Furbies can also turn up. Just ask for party mode or as the Furbies would say in Furbish, Da Nola. And now 25 years after their debut in 1998, a whole new generation of Furby fans is ready to learn Furbish and fall in love all over again. Or take care of it the way that you would take care of, of any friend that you have, you know, show it empathy and respect and have fun with it. Take it wherever you want to go. It's This is a companion for you. The brand new Furbies will hit store shelves this weekend. They're also available on Amazon for $69.99, which is a small price to pay for some 90s nostalgia. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Oh, he Will ruined it. Thunder there. Yeah, <laughs> they're still available. Uh, they yeah. could be in tomorrow. But yeah, both the purple and the coral models. Actually, the purple's the uh, one that's available tomorrow. The coral one. Uh -huh, you have to uh, wait. It usually ships within one to two weeks. Oh. But it's the number one uh, new release in plush interactive toy figures. Oh. Just Interesting. Just brush up on, on your furbish. On your furbish? Yeah, learning how to speak from <laughs> furbish. Dollars? $69.99. Hard pass. All right. Hard pass. Yeah, uh, we shall see. <laughs> Come it may not be up to me. Right? It may not be. I'm just like, add to cart. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. That was not my vibe when I was a kid. I really just like the teeny babies. I don't know if anyone remembers those. They were like collectible items at the time. And uh, I liked uh, my Stretch Armstrong.
His arms are strong. Oh, that was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, but I'm liking traffic this morning. Things have been great. 410 at Jackson Keller. Uh, again, our morning has started off with little to no problems out on the roadway. We've had some overnight construction that is wrapped up. Uh, 281 at Jones Maltzberger shouldn't be a problem, at least right now. But give it some time because we're going to see construction ramp up along 281 a little bit later this morning. I'm talking about that paving work, and it should wrap on Friday, July 14th. Uh, but this all, again, starts at 9 this morning, and fingers crossed, this will wrap around three in the afternoon. We will see alternating lane closures in both directions at Borgfeld Road. But as I mentioned, it's been pretty quiet for the most part. I haven't seen any other issues out on Transguide, TxDOT, or any of our other uh, agencies where we get that information from. But there you can see Tenant Hackberry. Things are good. I haven't spotted any Amazon trucks either, but I'm sure that there. they will be out in full force. Oh, we hear. We know they're out there. Yeah, yeah. we do. I just, <laughs> we I do. just got oh, a yes. ring alert. Hmm. They ring my doorbell at 530. So so they're out and about. Good for them. Yeah, they they are working on, hard on Prime Day. Hey, I can I can appreciate that. And yes. now's a good time to be doing that. Then. Oh, absolutely. True. Mm. Yeah, I feel for those uh, feel for those folks that are out delivering those packages because they're out in the out in and out of the AC. But uh, anyone that's working outside today, uh, the heat's going to be a real big thing. Uh, you may have heard that there's some dust starting to move in too. Folks uh -oh. in Florida are feeling it. Are we going to deal with it here? Short answer is no, not really. Uh, we had just some really, really small concentrations yesterday. And as we look at the Saharan dust forecast, and by the way, we see Saharan dust every year. You hear us report on it. It's been kind of quiet this year. Really hasn't been a big issue. Uh, but here's what the forecast looks like. We will get a dust plume moving towards the Gulf of Mexico by tomorrow but it doesn't really make it in here until Friday. And even when it does, it's again, very, very light concentrations to the point where you may not even notice it. Uh, but if we're gonna see any of it, it's probably gonna be along the coast. This will be Friday that we'll watch some of that dust coming in and maybe over the weekend. Uh, and then again, as we get into next week, there's another plume that tries to work and this one may be a little bit thicker. We'll see, uh, you know, sometimes it can make the sky a little bit hazy, it can affect uh, some folks who are kind of sensitive to that kind of thing, but uh, when these uh, concentrations are that low, it's usually not a big, big deal. Uh, the air quality today is actually good, believe it or not, so we don't have any problems today. Uh, just some clouds out there right now. We do need to talk about the heat, though. Okay, what's the difference between heat exhaustion and a heat stroke? What are some of the symptoms you want to look for if you're going to be outside? Well, heat exhaustion, you feel faint or dizzy, but if you're moving into that heat stroke area, you're talking about a throbbing headache, Excessive sweating for heat exhaustion, we've been there, but if you stop sweating, that's when it really becomes a problem. You got cool, pale, clammy skin for heat exhaustion. For heat stroke, you're gonna notice it's red, hot, dry skin. And uh, nausea and vomiting come along with this, and then you get a rapid, strong pulse if you're moving into that heat stroke territory. And if you start noticing these things, that's when you need to see a doctor immediately because uh, that's definitely danger territory. And uh, you, obviously losing consciousness is a big, big deal. So be aware uh, with this kind of heat, those are the kind of things that can happen. And yes, you wanna call 911 if uh, that situation unfolds. Let's take a look at the forecast. 83 at nine o'clock, 86, 10 a.m. noon time. We're at 92, but the feels like number's already at 102. And once we get into the afternoon, we're looking at 103 with a feels like number close to 110. Uh, so the heat indices around the area are gonna be pretty brutal this afternoon. Some places could be up above 110, which is why we wanna mention that heat stroke uh, issue. Uh, you want to conserve energy between 3 and 8 o'clock, 3 and 8 p.m. It is a CPS Energy Yellow Day. For more information on that, you can scan the QR code. And right now, we've got 79 degrees outside, so we have finally fallen below 80. Southerly winds at 11, dew point still up there at 74. Very quickly, as we look around Texas, there are some showers and storms to our north. Some of this activity, maybe a sprinkle or two, works into the hill country later today, but we don't expect anything here in San Antonio other than maybe a few added clouds during the afternoon. Extended forecast, we got triple digits all the way through. This heat is not going anywhere, and it probably lasts even into next week. We'll be right back.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are in the Hudson Valley and assessing the damage. Now about 36 hours since the heaviest rains here. Uh, you can see we have that drone up and lots to clean up. But we've also got to talk about what's happening yet this morning in Vermont. They're still dealing with that flooding. So many roads closed. Jacqueline Lee is up there for us with the latest. And I'll tell you when all the rain finally leaves. Also, Evan Gershkovich detained in Russia more than 100 days now. His parents are speaking in a broadcast exclusive about their hopes for his coming home. George sitting down with them. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA.